I have a quick story for you. Uh, when my son Johnny was younger, he's he's seven now, but he was around three, and he was really sick, uh, super bad cough and uh, running fever, and we took him to urgent care uh, a few times, and every time we took him, they said, you know, he just he has a cold. Don't worry about it. Um, he'll be fine. <laughs> we were told. Um, now, of course, my, I, I tend to, you know, if a professional doctor tells me something, I, I tend to generally believe it. Um, but my wife was not having any of it. She knew better. She knew that there was um, something worse wrong with, with uh, Johnny. So she kept pushing, and finally we got him into a different doctor, and uh, they looked a little bit deeper into things, and it turned out that he had RSV. Um, he was pretty sick, and thank God this doctor really, um, she knew what she was doing, and she fixed him up pretty quickly. Um, but that being said, it went on a little bit too long. Um, he now, now he has asthma. Um, may or may not be related to that, but um, that's the case nonetheless. Um, and I bring this up because, you know, my, my wife, something in her gut told her, that, you know, there was something else going on with her baby. She knew better. And, you know, it's interesting. We live in this society uh, where we have sayings like, trust your gut or, you know, follow your heart. We have sayings like this that uh, would lead one to believe that our society as a whole kind of believes in a, in a bigger picture, you know, more, more than meets the eye when it comes to what modern science can tell us. But when the rubber meets, meets the road, when it comes to all this, generally we live in a society where um, our more analytical mind uh, takes over. So if a doctor tells you something, um, you know, we want to tend to believe it. And I bring all of this up because I can't tell you how often we have parents come in here uh, to our clinic who um, they, they, they knew that their child was delayed. And, but they had a doctor or a family member, somebody tell them, uh, hey, you know what, boys are just later talkers. They'll talk in time. Or every kid is different, don't worry about it. And while these things can definitely be true, all too often we have parents tell us that, you know, they knew in their gut that, that there was something off, but they, they didn't act sooner. And so we, Tanya and I, wanted to just sit down and have a quick discussion about this because uh, your gut, following your gut, following your heart, uh, more and more modern day science is actually showing us that these are these aid in our thinking. Your, our guts do tell us things and our hearts do tell us things. They are connected through neurotransmitters and nerves to our brains and they do help us think. So we want to kind of help get back to basics and ensure that parents are trusting their gut. Uh, it, it doesn't hurt to get some follow-up if you just feel that something isn't right. Seek a second opinion. And so Tanya and I sat down on a beautiful fall day uh, just to talk a little bit more about this. So stay tuned in because it's time to chat. Hi, I'm Tanya Friend, and I've been a speech and language pathologist for 13 years. I am also the owner and director of Chatterbox Speech Therapy, a speech therapy practice that serves the children and community in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I'm Corey Walker. I've been working with children for nearly 20 years, and I was a pioneering app developer in the area of speech and language pathology. We all have gifts in this life, and mine is knowing what makes children tick. Parenting in the modern age comes with uncharted challenges. We'll be bringing you discussions with experts in childhood development and introducing some tough questions and topics. Together with our experience and knowledge, we have created this podcast to help you with your child's development and wellness. So listen up. Because it's time to chat. So it's a beautiful fall day and we decided to sit outside and do a podcast um, this morning we had a parent come in talking about 
she had a little boy that she brought in her son brought in and he was uh, I think 17 months and she was talking about how her doctor had previously told them boys just talk later um, so don't worry about it um, so she did wait this was she for her first son she did wait to get any kind of direction ask any questions um, until he was a little over two <clears throat> excuse me and then people told her well why why did you wait so long <laughs> So we wanted to talk a little bit today about things that you might hear from other people out in the world or your doctor as far as um, how and when to get help for your kids if you think they might be delayed. Yeah, Corey brought this to my attention. We always have these little five-minute conversations in passing <laughs> while we're doing stuff, and we've decided we're going to start you know, recording these and getting this these little nuggets out to you guys but when he mentioned that to me it it struck me because this isn't the first story like this that we've heard we've heard from several of our parents and our families that come to see us that they wish they would have come sooner that they were given advice by someone whether it was a family friend maybe um, their pediatrician or or someone else that was important in their life that told them oh don't worry you know give it some time and so we really wanted to talk about this because Although this isn't us sounding the alarms, telling everybody, oh, yes, be very concerned, be really worried. Um, we don't want to cause more fears or anxiety. But we do want to tell parents that trusting your intuition and trusting your gut is so important as a parent. Um, if you feel like something isn't right, if you feel like your child isn't developing at the rate you think they should, it is okay to seek other guidance and other knowledge. And it is probably very smart and worthwhile to seek that advice from the professionals in, in that area, like speech therapists. Yeah, your child is literally um, a part of you. So if you feel that um, something is off, um, just because it's a doctor, a pediatrician, or whoever that's telling you um, not to worry, um, Maybe that's the case. Maybe you don't have need, uh, a need to worry, but I think seeking out a specialist in certain areas is, is great. I think that's the best thing that you said it right there, trusting your gut. Yeah, it's, and you know, this one really struck, stuck with us because it is true that, I, Corey and I were talking about this, and it is true that boys, how did I put it this morning? <laughs> I don't want to say that boys just talk later. That That's... I don't, I don't like phrasing it that way, but um, it is true that boys tend to be less vocal with their communication, and sometimes they're maybe they use their body to communicate a little bit more, right? And then that's that's just something that that we can see. And so I I can see where some of these statements come from and and the meaning that they hold. But what it's important to know is that there should be communication going on, and so. Um, we were just talking about this, whether it's gestures, pointing, um, pulling on you, or, I mean, this isn't necessarily a positive one, but, or pushing somebody out of the way or, you know, something like that. There should be beginnings of communication and you should, your child should always be hitting basic developmental milestones. Um, so starting to babble or coo or make eye contact. Um, what else can you think of? Um, responding to music or sounds you should be seeing those things whether it's a little boy or a little girl at, at different ages yeah so, so um, maybe it's the case and this isn't always the case but maybe um, you know your your son might be talking less but he, sh he should still be able to hit the the, the milestones right? right so he still says uh, first word around one year and by 18 months, approximately 50. Now he might not say as say it as much, but he right. still has that those capabilities. There you go. That's that's kind of how yeah. we had talked about it this morning. They may they might not use their vocal communication as their first go to, but they should be able to. Those words should be developing. The sound should be developing. Um, but I think that that saying comes from you know the little boy that might not think to say, you know mommy can I have a cookie and just runs to the kitchen and tries to start climbing or getting it himself but you know you see that in children who tend to be more independent anyways but but our point is we would want them to be able to have the words to communicate 
whether it's want cookie or I want a cookie, but maybe they're just not choosing to use the words. And, you know, that, that could just be something specific to, to your child or the personality of your child, but they should have the ability to do it yeah. when needed. Yeah. And, um, this is not to say that doctors aren't super knowledgeable. Um, they're wonderful. Um, but I think just with anything, a doctor would tend to say you had a concern about um, your child's heart. They would refer you to a heart specialist, right? If, um, so I think that getting a second opinion in this regard, if, if your doctor tells you, uh, don't worry, they'll, they'll talk on their own terms, maybe that's the case. But um, taking that extra effort just to go find a, in this case, speech and language therapist um, could make a big difference. Yeah, I think it's also important to remember that when you're taking your child to your pediatrician, it's usually for like a well check appointment or maybe they do, they've come down with a little bug of some sort and you're just having a checkup done. Your That doctor is only seeing a snip of your child's yeah. behavior, first of all. Second, if your child is ill, they are not seeing your typical, the, the behavior of your child in its typical state, in their typical state, sorry, that was worded wrong. Um, but you know, if they're not feeling well, then they're not going to be themselves. And so that's part of it. Also, doctors are busy. They're going from patient to patient. And so they're, they're not, you know, maybe they can't sit there and spend the time with your, you and your child, like a speech therapist would be able to, if you get a screening or an assessment. And also they're, they're also relying on information that you're giving them. And so, and it's always different. What a parent sees in, you know, in your home or when you're in, those quiet moments with your child is different than the way your child will act here. I mean, how many times do we do an evaluation and the child and their parent comes and the mom's like, oh, they talk so much more than this at home. (laughs) Well, it's because they're in an unfamiliar situation with unfamiliar people. So, you know, it's, it's not getting a clear picture and they're not able to spend the time observing your child's communication skills. And so that, like Corey said, they, they're very knowledgeable. They're, they're needed and we rely on them for things as well. But, they're not able to give you what what other professionals can give you in that area so yeah and also do yourselves a favor and um, don't consult dr google yes stay <laughs> uh, away from google yeah. or wikipedia or any right. other <laughs> you could really engine. drive yourself crazy so yeah. um, there are so many nuanced reasons why kids might not be talking at certain times so um, just find your local speech therapist um, and that should really ease your mind um, in many ways, I think. Yeah, we we offer free screenings here for this reason, because if a parent calls us up and they're just not sure, they just want to be, they want to double check, they're worried, it, it's, it really eases them and it gives them a direction, you know, whether we tell them, no, 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 come back in six months, let's see, let's see how they look then, or we might just say, nope, you, no evaluation, they're on track, you're doing well, or we might say, yes, let's go ahead and look into this further. Um, I had another thought. I lost it. You might have to cut that out. Yeah, we do. Um, we do do free screenings. Um, doesn't take more than even 15 minutes. So um, if you're interested, um, come see us. We also do screenings where um, we charge. I can't remember. Forty dollars. For, Forty bucks. Um, and they're a little bit longer. Um, but we'll do a screening, and then we also send you home with a bunch of uh, things that you can try at home. Yeah, tips and strategies for you guys to start doing right away and and making that difference. Plus, you know, yes, we said don't Google anything, but we also have some nice videos on our timetochat.org website that just give you some more information on those developmental milestones in case you don't have them at your fingertips or you're getting kind of mixed messages. One thing I love to tell parents all the time is no matter what, I mean, as parents, you're going to worry. You, you know, spend the moment you become a parent, worry is just part of your everyday, everyday schedule, right, Corey? Yes. It's you don't ever stop thinking about your children or wondering what you could do best for them or if you're making mistakes. But I always tell parents, it's okay to be worried and it's okay to have these questions and it's definitely okay to to research or to call somebody or ask ask for that help. But in the meantime, enjoy your child, spend time with your child you know, do all of the things that you would normally do, play with them, engage them, and and any time that you're spending with them, that language that you're giving them, 
and talking to them as much as possible, that's going to do a lot more for them than sitting on your phone and using your search engines to Google what is wrong with them. Because then in those moments, not only are you increasing your fears and your worries, but you're taking that precious time away from enjoying your child. Um, I always say, let your child be your child, who, whoever they are, whatever they are. And, you know, yes, seek that help, but don't let it steal away from the time that you have with your child in the moment. Absolutely. I, I couldn't say it better. Yeah. Just, um, schedule, schedule an appointment with a therapist and then sit back and enjoy your child. Um, you talk about things when you meet the therapist, but, um, there's also, you know, I've rarely seen a child come through here that doesn't make phenomenal progress. Yep. Um, there's always hope and great things that can be done. Um, so that's just good to know too. Yeah, that's, that is true. It's, you know, speech and language is, is something that you, you're going to see progress. And there's a lot of things. The, I think the, one of the magical things about speech and language is there's so much of it that you can take home and do with your child that's going to enrich both of your lives. And so, yes, even though no parent ever wants to hear that something is quote unquote wrong with their child, in this case, it is something that is part of their daily life. It's part of your daily life. So every, any moment that you're spending with your child, you are going to be working towards helping them in this area. So it's it's pretty magical. Yep. I think uh, leaving leaving with uh, just restating the fact that you got to got to trust your gut. Yes. So um, that's the main thing. Uh, you could have five doctors tell you something, but seek out a specialist um if you know something is off or not off um you know seek out help yeah definitely all right see you later note see you later (laughs) 